Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Batwoman. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we have our first official um, Poison Ivy crime of, you know, the series Batwoman. Um, obviously, Renee immediately jumps over on top of this, because she already figured, like... Poison Ivy, well, Pamela's, like, infection has spread to someone else, and now the question is, who? But then you have, you have Alice with all the answers, because she's, uh, you know, she's keeping it hush-hush from both Ryan, as well as R Renee, where she got, like, uh, Ivy's, well, Ivy from, and it's like, oh, well, we know she got it from Mary, but she's being so quiet about it, and you're like, why is that? But I guess it's, like, for her typical, like, dramatic flair of reveals of when it comes like dropping this information because it's not until later on that she reveals it to Mary but Mary's like oh you're crazy or whatever it's like no she's like look at your your uh your like you know workspace it looks like something straight out of Jumanji your constant drinking of water like you know and then it's like the moment the victim who's still alive sees her face he freaks out so it adds validity to it which initially Luke and Ryan aren't they're like wait what they're like you're no and I love that it's just like as the like Mary's trying to spit it out Alice is just like oh my god and she's like I thought it it was it was hard work just like waiting for Kate to come out and so with this reveal, it's like, wait, you knew the entire time. It's like, why didn't you say anything? And she's like, she's like, Alice is like, no. What's really important is why that I, not the biggest fan of my step B and my step B stepsister, isn't the biggest fan of me. Yeah, I was able to notice what her team couldn't. I mean, Alice is the one that was already f uh, adding fuel to the fire of like, right, the team doesn't really respect you. You're kind of secondary, especially now that Luke is in the, on the front lines as Batwing too. So it pushes her even further back, you know? So it's like, right, you don't listen to my opinions about things. I kind of get shut down. I just get treated as like a secondary member of this team rather than just being a full blown member of the team. And so both Luke and Ryan haven't been as, like noticeable about like Mary it's like she's like it should have been pretty clear the signs that something was going on here and even later on Ryan admits like right she tried to tell me about what was going on in the park but I was so caught up in my own family drama I didn't want to listen to her so it turns out that she's basically been going into a fugue stake and attacking people and obviously for her it's like she doesn't want to hurt anybody luckily this guy was alive but then it's like you know what if I hurt someone else because it turns out she'd been doing a lot in her fugue state. She ended up tracking down the guy that works for Black Glove. Even though Sophie's been like doing everything she can. Which we'll get to that soon enough. But the reason why she was able to do it was because she could use her title as a doctor. To kind of get around some privacy laws. Which I love that line from uh, from uh, Alice being like. Oh yeah. Um, breaking some meth med medical ethical laws like oh like kind of references it's hardly quinn i'm like eh, it is interesting it's like yeah i'm trying to because i was trying to think on the top of my head like the dark side doctors i'm aware of in the dc universe are you know harley and hugo strange both like gotham slash you know batman related people but i'm like i'm curious how many other like twisted doctors are there in the uh dc universe those are the only ones that come to the top of my head i'm sure like if you were to um wasn't, is Dr. Psycho like, a, isn't he, a, isn't it, what's his face? Because isn't, isn't his, yeah, because he's got like a PhD, so he's like Dr. Psycho, right? From uh, the Harley Quinn show. I think, yeah, I think, um, I think so. Isn't his character's name Dr. Psycho? Regardless, I don't, I don't know if he's like got some medical li license or a doctor of some shape or form, but regardless, I, I, that, that was just kind of popping in my head and I'm, I'm going on a tangent and stuff like that, but... Mary does kind of look at it in a positive light because it's like, oh, like maybe it's bad people I'm going after, but it seems like what's triggering it. And I guess like her anger is the underlining issue. Like when her anger gets transported to someone that like she does kind of have like some justice mode or vendetta mode or something kind of ingrained in her to some extent. But because the whole point was also like, right, not every person who has the um, Batman trophy is exact follows the same like patterns as their predecessor, like the new um, Mad Hatter wasn't like the OG Mad Hatter. They, were, they had two different like psychologies and just super uh, two separate like um, 
motives behind like what they do and how they operate it. But Mary went after the first dude because he were in the DMs. He referred to her as sweet and he felt it was kind of very like demeaning. She felt like it was demeaning. So she made essentially almost like a beehive out of him. And the other guy is because, I guess, because of what he did. he What he did to not only Jordan, but her friends when he murdered them. and exper So I guess she kind of did the same thing to him. She planted him and kind of experimented on him. So. so there was some part of that. But part of me is wondering, like, there's probably some part of Pamela driving that, too. Because what it seems like what we get later on is that Mary is acting on her own, but the the infection is acting like a part of... I mean, maybe it's just it's acting upon that, but it almost seems like there's still some connection to Ivy Light. Some form of her consciousness still gets passed on, while it seems like the infection just amplifies what's already there in that person and makes them kind of their truest self. Like, you know, kind of probably gets rid of, like, a lot of your uh, inhibitions and, like, kind of that part of you that would be halted by, like, you know other things and your con the consequences like a lot of that part part of your brain probably gets shut down and so but i wonder is there some level of pamela um like kind of driving the force behind this because obviously alice dropped the deep she's like oh i'm not one to gossip but all right let me tell you all the deets about everything between renee and uh poison ivy and finding out their story being what it is which is really tragic it's like yeah they were in love and then like the woman you loved became a super villain. She wasn't a person you loved anymore. At least that person started disappearing. So you did what you thought you had to do. You turned to Batman uh, for help uh, to deal with this. And the woman you... Like, that's why she's mainly... Because I wonder on some shape or form, like... Well, because she even talked about it previously. She's not the same person she was back then. She's changed in that time. So maybe she's thinking, like, if she can find Pamela now, because the only person who knows where she is is Bruce. Which I'm sure Mary will be able to potentially find her once, like, Pamela probably, like... I wonder, is Pamela going to go full-blown, like, zombieing other people? Like, is Mary just the start? Like, is Mary going to pass it on to other people? And eventually, like, once the, the vines have spread... Well, you know, maybe it's that. Maybe it's just spreading the, the vegetation, like, the plant all over Gotham so that they can find the way to Ivy because the moment they find her... Because it's not like a... Like, as Mary tries to say it later on, it's not like a homing beacon that you can follow back to her. But maybe that's what her grand scheme plan is, to find Poison Ivy... And, um, spread everything across, I don't know, and maybe it's just doing her own thing that might, you know, she might be doing her own thing, but a secondary aspect of this infection is finding its way back to her, or maybe just purely spreading from person to person, that's where I was kind of bringing up, maybe there's going to be almost a zombie element to it, I, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see uh, how they uh, play that. Even Ryan and Luke can admit to understanding, like, right, all of Mary's anger, she has every right to be mad at us. She calls Luke out for the fact that it's like, oh, like, you're scared now, you're up here calling for daddy's help. You didn't need daddy's help, remember? Like, you said that you didn't need him anymore, so you don't need, I took the, the that uh, fail safe off, and I also removed the AI, so I figured I could take advantage of it, you know? And it's like, right, I'm just, you know, you never listen to me. I mean, I'm just the doctor of the team. And then she turns to Ryan. And it's like, right, we're supposed to be friends. But the fact is, you didn't notice. You put, you know, this pseudo family, this woman who wanted nothing to do with you, you put her before anyone else. You know, so that's not what friendship is. You know, because the sad thing is, your mortal enemy, the, the woman who murdered your mom, actually showed more attention to you than your, and noticed that you were something was wrong before your actual friends were so that there is a layer of kind of like yeah that is super jacked up in the grand scheme of things so once again they admit mary has every right to be as pissed off as she is um but once again the plant's just amplified and kind of giving a voice to that anger that because mary i think is a lot of times has kind of buried that deep deep down inside Speaking of um, everything between Ryan and her family, that ends up becoming a big point of contention between her and Sophie. Because Sophie wants to keep looking into the uh, black glove because she's like, right, I want to tie this back to Jada. But then in her perspective, it seems like 
Ryan is defending her. What she is, it's like, it's still horrible what Jada did, but Jada didn't do it for the purpose. She didn't know there were going to be experiments happening on people. She didn't know what was going to happen to your sister or those other three victims. But it's like, I'm not, and, can, and even Ryan's like, I'm not saying it justified, but she did have her own reasons. And it's like, what is that? And she's keeping it hush hush because it's like, right, it's not my place to uh, tell someone else's circumstances. It's also because it's like, because she's, she finally has a family and she realizes that her brother isn't right in the head and she wants to do what she can to help him. So she's keeping her mother's secret for now, but it's like, it's causing a lot of damage in the team because even, uh, Alice starts spreading like some of that dissent amongst like, you know, Luke and Mary trying to make it seem like, Oh, like Ryan, like, Oh, you, you know that she's doing something. You just don't know what it is that she's doing. Like, obviously like she left her friend, quote unquote friend Mary here like in a room with a psychopath or something like that like me so it's like she's not thinking clearly like she's more concerned about this family situation to an extent she is so it, it makes sense to some extent I mean I still think like no you should tell them but it's a, I guess it's like she doesn't want to say anything until like you know Jade is able to get this under control it's like once Marcus has been kind of dis like indisposed becomes indisposed i think that's when she'd be like okay this is what's going on because sadly uh alice already texted sophie about what was going on and she's like oh sorry i didn't know i wasn't supposed to and you know it's like sophie's a great you know roommate she's been doing the dishes when i leave them out even using that really good fabric softener that uh doesn't irritate my sensitive skin um but uh she's torturing the guy because it turns out black gloves main operation is circling around these families these powerful families that have messed up kids one of said families was like oh the Elliots, tommy's family before he became hush his mom already knew he was kind of disturbed so these are big time families that are trying to like deal with their messed up kids and one of them is jada like obviously like She's getting, like, she wasn't able to kind of quite get the information she wanted before Ryan showed up. And home dude ended up killing himself because they're all about discretion. So it's like, right, I've already said more than I should have. And so he kills himself. And now Sophie is like, right, whatever your mom's secrets are, it looks like they stayed with him. And now, like, you know, Ryan's stuck between a rock and a hard place because it's like, it's not what you think it. I'm not trying to defend my mom necessarily because I care about it, but I think it's also like my brother's kind of a victim in all of this, and I just want to make sure, you know, because she doesn't want anyone acting before like they're able to properly take care of him. Because also like potentially him being the psychopath that he is, like he could fly off the handle if like word gets out if they if anyone makes any moves before Jada's ready. I think, but it's like right not filling them in. That's not a good issue. That's not a good thing. I mean, to be fair, it feels like the bats have that the hardest, like, opening up the people, like, uh, there's a lot of, res you know, I think being open about a lot of that stuff, it's like, eh, Bruce has it, uh, even though they don't exist in continuity, we've seen Titans-wise that the Robins have that, um, maybe Barbara does to some extent, I don't know if Cassandra has that issue, um, it seems like, you know, I think Kate had it to some extent, and I think, you know, Ryan has it as well, especially because it's a complicated circumstance. Like, I think it gets complicated for a lot of people when just family is involved. Family always makes things complicated, especially in Ryan's case, because you're, you're torn between, like, right, the family you've made for yourself, but also the one that you discovered, and it's like, you could help. You know, it's like despite wanting nothing to do with your mom, despite your mom doing some messed up stuff, now understanding like, right, everything she did was for your sake. It's like, you know, because she, she didn't want you around, Marcus being the way he is, like, that would have been devastating. But to be fair, that was like before, like, a lot of his tendencies showed up. So there were, there had to be other contributing facts. So I had to think about because like, they're only a year apart in age, supposedly, so... That was like when Ryan was born that she made that all happen. So it's like there had to be con other contributing factors to that. But more so why she kept her away, I guess. Because I just thought about it. I was like, right, because they're supposed to only be like a year apart in age or something, aren't they? Even to the point Sophie turns to the one person she can under these circumstances. And that's Montoya, you know, which that's interesting. Um, 
both of them are kind of on the outs a little bit too. Like Montoya is kind of like like her partner being like her drinks. You know, it's like oh, like you know, Detective Montoya. Like I would have expected, but this isn't even like an actual office. And it's like oh yeah, it's funny coming from you. Like at least I have a job. It's like I quit the crows. It's like oh yeah, before all that stuff went down, it just oh for her it was she almost made a comment almost like oh that's pretty convenient you happen to leave before like shit really hit the fan with the, the uh, them and everything. But it's like give me all the information you can about the black glove. And it's like, I have no idea. All I know is that most people who interact with them end up dead because they keep themselves quiet. So you might want to be careful if you proceed any further. Uh, because Sophie felt like she didn't have anyone else to help. She couldn't tr like rely on uh, Ryan or the, you know, the bat team. It's like she felt like this was something she had to do on her own. Uh, but when it was all said and done and, you know at the botanical garden after like being confronted by Mary, you know, uh, once again, uh, Ryan and Luke got their, uh, their one, two punch to the face about all this, but also Renee got her own about the whole, like, right. What you did, what she did to the woman she loved. It's like, right. She shriveled up. She's all alone and she hates you, Renee. So, but now it's also like, right. You knew Mary was, you know, infected. You didn't say anything. It's like, yeah, but she was our best friend. We weren't going to turn you over. And in Montoya's vision, it's like, you thought I was going to do something to hurt her. I was going to help her. But it's like, secretly, like, you were helping to help her just because you, like, don't, it's not completely selfless on her part. She was hoping to get something out of it as well. Like, you know, but I guess in the end, it's like, it doesn't matter. We would have been helping someone. I might have gotten something out of it well as well so sure but it's also like i understand knowing my circumstances should have been more motivation for you to help but then maybe the argument is like well despite everything well she didn't turn i well she turned her turn pamela over to into a trap for uh uh trapped her uh with batman's help so but that's when like eh, she didn't necessarily go through 100 percent the proper channels with that so it should have been understandable like right someone the previous poison ivy was someone that she cared about so of course she'd be more sympathetic knowing the current poison ivy or at least the current infected person was someone you cared about so it was just kind of like a lot of this was just missteps and mishaps all around and so ultimately it's like you know uh, Ryan's like we got to find a cure but she has to call in a favor so she's calling a Jada which that's going to compli thing, complicate things even more with Sophie because it's like wait you're turning to the woman's like and for Ryan it's like right I'll do whatever I have to if it means making up to Mary I know we're, you're pissed at me you might not like it but she's the means to potentially saving Mary so that's definitely going to be interesting um, but then at the end we have Montoya and Sophie which you're like oh that's that's going to be complicated because I don't think that's going to be a short thing. I think that's going to be an on and off thing throughout the season, even though like we were starting up the whole because I think Sophie's also doing it, too, because it's just like, right, they especially because she felt like her and Ryan were getting closer and it's like, oh, we're, we're friends, but potentially more. And um, nothing's happened between them. And I think it just in that moment, it's just like, right, I think they just caught caught up in the moment. And they they're both dealing with um, the uh, complicated circumstances with the respective women in their lives. In Montoya's case, it's bringing up a lot of history between her and Pamela and then Sophie like feeling like she can't trust Ryan like even though they built up this good partnership it's like right after everything we went through of building up the trust between us last season and now we were supposed to be in a good spot and probably a, essentially a better place and now it's like oh it's like you're choosing that family over me like after everything we've been through like I've earned your trust more than your that family has but for whatever reason you're trusting them more than me so that's definitely going to be uh, complicated. I mean, to be fair, I think everyone was kind of harboring their own complicated things. But it's, once again, the thing of no one was paying attention to Mary, Luke's dealing with things in his own right. He wasn't really talking about it. And obviously, Ryan's been a little vocal just because, like, you know, some of the family stuff. But other stuff, obviously, she's kept to herself. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. Now that we have, you know, what... Uh, exactly is Alice going to get out of this? I have no idea. I mean, I'm assuming it's going to be the end result that it always is. Like, she's trying to get her freedom. So maybe she's hoping, like, the plants can help with, like, removing the nanites from her system so she can actually disappear. Or maybe she thinks Pamela, you know, maybe this whole circumstance might lead to a cure for her hallucinations. Like, maybe there's something there. Maybe it's just like, hey, 
allying yourself, you know, it's like, right, you were, you were allying yourself with a superhero, reluctantly. Now you're allying yourself with a um, placeholder supervillain, uh, well, borderline villain slash placeholder for a OG supervillain. Once again, we'll see how uh, they end up uh, playing this all out going forward, but it's going to be interesting to see what the next episode has in store for us. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.